Welcome back to the Arthritis Broadcast Network. We're live in Victoria, BC. At, it was actually a beautiful sunny day today. Uh, and I noticed some of the tulips or daffodils out today. Um, my name is Kelly English. I'm with the Arthritis Patient Advisory Board of Arthritis Research Canada. And I'm here with Dr. Leahy Eater. Uh, and what I'd like to ask first is if you could just tell us a little bit about yourself. I know that you're an assistant professor of medicine at the University of Toronto, um, and you are a rheumatologist. I am, yeah. Practicing rheumatologist or with research? So I'm a clinician scientist, so I do okay. both research and I see patients in my clinic as well. Okay. I focus on psoriatic arthritis. I work at Women's College Hospital in Toronto, and we have a specialty clinic for psoriatic arthritis, so this is my area of interest. It is. So, um, what made you go into rheumatology? It's the best subspecialty. It is the best. Yes. 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 Um, the kindest uh, people and patients as well. Um, and I noticed that you're running a workshop titled A Closer Look at Enthesis. Um, what is it? And what's the relationship to arthritis? Okay, so enthesitis is, a, is an inflammation that affects the tendon or the ligament uh, where it inserts into the bone. And we now know that it's an important manifestation of psoriatic arthritis and all of the spondyloarthritis group. And patients may feel and complain of pain in these bony uh, parts uh, all over the body. And it's important because we now know that this is the initial manifestation and where the inflammation starts in psoriatic arthritis and from there it goes into the joints. So it's important to understand how it happens and we now have good medicine to treat it. And um, I, know, I know a little bit about it. Are these always an HLA-B27 gene that, that is associated with that? It's an excellent question. Mm -hmm. HLA B27 is an important factor, especially in ankylosing spondylitis. About 70 to 80 percent of the patients have this gene, but in psoriatic arthritis, there are many other genes that are not the HLA B27, and they are associated with the disease as well. So, um, HLA B27 by itself is a marker of more severe disease in psoriatic arthritis, but most of the patients don't carry it. Okay, and um, I know that I was doing some reading this week, and AS, or ankylosporinopathy, is quite often associated with GI issues. Do you find the same thing with psoriatic? So with psoriatic, probably the prevalence is lower, but uh, there are less studies. So when um, we ask patients if they have bowel issues like Crohn's disease or colitis, very small proportion. So about 4% of the patients have these problems, which is much lower That's than ankylosing spondylitis. But when you, people just actually did colonoscopy and looked inside, then the prevalence is much higher, but probably still lower than in AS. I was really, really surprised to read yeah. that, that you could have silent yeah. um, I'll call them gut issues for yeah. the sake of not doing all of them, yeah. um, and yet you still had them. So oh. that's interesting to see that that's same in psoriatic. Yeah. Um, so you said that your research area is in understanding the risk factors. Now, um, is there a way that if you get psori psoriasis first that you can either delay psoriatic arthritis or help help to reduce that? So this is, this is an important and exciting issue actually because this, because we have a group, most patients with psoriatic arthritis first develop psoriasis, the skin disease, and only later on develop the joint problems. So you have a group of people that you can actually identify quite easily and potentially do different things that could prevent a disease from happening. So. And um, the key point or key question is who are these people and what can we do to try to reduce this risk? So in order to answer this question, we need to know what are the risk factors. And we've been doing some studies in Toronto where we followed people with psoriasis that did not have arthritis for many, many years. And we analyzed the data and 
we found that some of the factors, that there are factors that can predict who is going to develop it and who will not. So that would make major changes for, we know that early detection and yeah. early treatment yeah. is huge, so, so if we could do that. So, um, so some of these factors, for example, you can change, like genetic factors, right? Of so, course. Uh, but there are other things, like people are asking me, what can I do to reduce the risk? So the main thing that we've and other uh, identified is that obesity is a risk factor. So people mm -hmm. that are overweight and have psoriasis are at high risk of developing psoriatic arthritis in the future. So I'm telling my patients, you know, if you can make sure that you're... Um, watching your diet and watching what you eat and making sure that your weight is under control and doing exercise, then you can actually reduce the risk of developing in, in the future. And does diet, because I know this is a big deal, um, mm -hmm. does diet play a part in that other than keeping your weight down? So many patients are asking that and we're actually, um, in our group we received a grant from the CIHR to investigate it and we are looking at different types of diet and whether certain foods can actually make psoriatic arthritis better or worse. Um, at this point there is no data, we just don't know. We know that weight plays a major role, so reducing weight can actually improve the skin disease and can improve the joint disease as well. But it's hard to achieve and hard to maintain, right? So right. Um, the big question is, are there any specific foods that is better for you or triggers? For you? Or so this, I hope that I'll be able to answer it maybe in a couple of years. That's if all you we ask for. So we will and always <laughs> invite you. Um, and another thing is, is that because I've, I've just been to ACR in the last yeah. year, and these are all things that quite fascinated me, and it must be fairly new because I'm not seeing a lot of literature mm -hmm. on it. Um, one of the things they said about AS, which I did know, is that smoking is a risk factor for, for gut and for more pain with AS. Yeah. Is that proving the same for psoriatic arthritis? So smoking is a risk factor for psoriasis, for the skin disease. Okay. For the joint disease, the results are kind of conflicting. So we've done a study where we show that smoking was actually less common in psoriatic arthritis patients, so it's sort of protective. Well, that's good. But um, <laughs> smoking is not good for you, so I wouldn't suggest people to start smoking in order to reduce the risk. So, that's right. Um, so smoking is not good. That's we know that. We know that. We don't want yeah. anyone to smoke. Yeah. Um, now, is something else I love to you, just to change gears yeah. for a couple of minutes. Uh, I read on your web page that you have the only cardiology rheumatology unit yep. in um, Canada. Yep. Um, can you tell me a bit more about that? Sure. And perhaps not everybody knows how much cardiology affects someone with rheumatoid arthritis or, or any, 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 any of the arthritis. So essentially any state of chronic inflammation, ongoing inflammation is not good for the heart and the blood vessels. Right. So we know for many years now that rheumatoid arthritis, psoriatic arthritis, ankylosing spondylitis, all of these are associated with increased risk of developing heart attack and stroke. The problem is that um, the usual ways that we can predict or identify people at high risk uh, that work well for the general population they don't work quite well for people with rheumatic diseases because there are other factors that may affect. So severity of inflammation and there are medications like steroids that can make things worse in addition to cholesterol and smoking and all of the other things that we know of. So um, we also know that people with rheumatic diseases tend to be under-diagnosed and under-treated for these cardiovascular risk factors. So. We as rheumatologists tend to focus on the joints and patients may see less their family physicians or they are concentrated in other things. So there are problems in terms of management of these risk factors. So this is one of the reasons that we created this clinic in Toronto as a collaboration between cardiology and rheumatology. And there are two main purposes for this program is first to better provide better care for patients. So we, we appreciate that. Yeah. <laughs> so we refer all of our patients above the age of 40 who do not have a history of heart disease to this clinic. And there they see a, a cardiologist and they go through a series of tests like echo and CT scan of the heart and 
Um, we were able to identify patients who had quite severe problems in the blood vessels and, and potentially prevented heart attacks from happening because we diagnosed it early. The second purpose of this is this program is to educate our colleagues uh, in terms of this risk because many of the family physicians are not aware of the fact that rheumatic patients are at increased risk and they need to be treated and considered like high risk patients like patients with diabetes and you know these uh, it may need to start these treatments for lower cholesterol and lowering the blood pressure much earlier than other people because of this excessive risk so we started it three years ago we hope to grow and expand beyond Toronto I think, it, I think it's wonderful now um, because I'm a patient and I'm an involved patient and I like to know things that patients can take responsibility for themselves mm -hmm. um, how often do you normally suggest that a patient because our GPs sometimes forget they, they we're often the care of our rheumatologist we're often the care of whomever, mm -hmm. and uh, some of the GPs forget to check on heart health, mm -hmm. but also they don't know that exceeded risk. I mean, it would be lovely if they did, but they don't. Yep. How often do you figure that the patient should nudge? So I, I think it's an excellent point that patients should be their own advocates and should mention and even educate the family physician that they are at high risk and they need to be treated. and screened for these factors. The recommendations now are that uh, patients with rheumatic diseases will be assessed every once a year for blood pressure and cholesterol and if these are elevated they right. need to be treated. Of course uh, smoking is again bad for the heart and engaging in regular physical activity is always good not just for the heart but for the joints as well. Maintaining healthy diet and um, weight under control so these are things that patients can do for themselves okay, as well so the take-home message would be if you have psoriatic arthritis keep your weight down yeah don't smoke ever yeah Let, let's, <laughs> let's just put that one right out yeah. there um and then heart health yeah heart physical health. activity is the best medicine and keep your diet yeah. mediterranean diet mediterranean probably diet. a pretty moderate diet isn't yeah. it yeah I'm sure that we probably have at least one question. Do we, do we Anita? Is there a certain type of arthritis in which cardiology issues are more common? So oh, well, that's a hard one. Yeah, it's a hard one. And um, well, there's been it, it's really hard to compare diseases and um, because they're very different. So obviously, men tend to be at a higher risk compared to women and psoriatic arthritis tend to affect men and women equally while rheumatoids are more affecting women but overall in terms of the risk probably rheumatoid and psoriatic and ankylosing spondylitis are all at about the same level in terms of the risk of developing um, heart issues now with the new medications with the biologic medications and better control of inflammation this is probably going down so that's another issue to, to mention in this context is that um, controlling inflammation of the skin and the joints is good for the heart as well. So making sure that uh, you see a rheumatologist on a regular basis. So but that's also that's a risk as well, just having your biologics because yeah. there are a couple that do raise cholesterol um, that you have to watch out for too, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's I not don't mean your yeah. job at all, <laughs> but I'm so impressed with your new clinic. Thank you. Yeah. And what should patients expect at these screening sessions? So, in a general screening question um, session, when you see a family physician, so at least uh, an assessment of the blood pressure, assessment of the cholesterol, and uh, glucose level, these are the things that uh, are associated with health, uh, heart health. In our clinic, because this is also there is a research component, we do some additional tests that I mentioned, like uh, echocardiogram, we do CT scan, we do ultrasound of the carotid arteries, uh, and these are aimed to directly assess the extent of plaques of built up of cholesterol inside the arteries that is um, 
partially independent of these risk factors that I mentioned, so we are directly looking at the heart and the blood vessels. So this gives us additional information. But this is only in our clinic in Toronto. We're going to keep an eye on that. We want one of those in Vancouver. Sure. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for coming and talking to us, and um, I look forward to your, I, I especially asked if I could inter, um, interview you. Oh, I, thank you. I was really interested in your field. Thank so you. Thank you so much. Thank you.